This is your city. Hold yourself up. Let's go. Bring him up there. Let's go. Find your coach. Let us show chat. Chat. Your home. Your opportunity. It's all about energy. It's all about effort. It's all about getting better. To make a name for yourself, going all the way down your community, the Touchdown, USA. your family. To reach higher and fight harder. Leveled the return man. And show the world. Right, he busted up the middle and he's gone again. Why South Florida football is called Bull Strong. When the Bulls win, you win at Wendy's. Wendy's is a proud partner of USF Athletics. And when the Bulls play, you win. Get a free small fry after each Bulls football game and score a free small frosty when they win. Valid for 24 hours after any game day at participating Tampa area Wendy's locations. No purchase necessary. He is now set a USF single game record. Touchdown, USF! Blake Barnett on a keeper. They will run on first down and splitting the seam and going all the way down the field for a huge game. Goes long, and this is picked off by Mike Hampton. Bulls defense digging in. A foot race to the end zone, and nobody is going to get him. Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by Wendy's. When the Bulls win, you win at Wendy's. And by Coca-Cola. Hooters. Tampa General Hospital. USF Health. Three, you're down. Here we go. talked a little bit before about how important guys playing as one is and I think that continuity is so important you know these guys are able to talk to each other they're able to communicate with each other you, you've got to be able to talk we talked about being tough you've got to be tough uh, and you've got to be able to talk you've got to be able to communicate with each other and these guys have been with each other for so long that they trust each other and they know what the other guy's gonna do so you know that's something that's that's really I'm, I'm fortunate to inherit a group that one was very well coached and two has that continuity and that love for each other that you you've got to have I, I got a couple of relationships with people here I mean like relationships with people that I never even thought I was gonna make a relationship with. I don't know, I just made like a connection, a bond with them that I like, if I like that bond because I feel like they can help me and I can help them in any kind of way. We all have like our own characteristics and I mean, they're all different, but we all gel together really well. When somebody's watching you and then they tell you, hey, you can do better, you can do better that, I know I take that I take that as constructive criticism and you know, I go back and I work on it and I try to make sure I'm the best that I can be. Just the connection we have is is pretty good, you know what I mean? Um, it's not it's not like as if someone is left out or someone feels like as if they don't belong. Our group is just a very cohesive unit. Town, Clearwater, Florida. A lot of people go there for the beach. It's one of the best beaches in Florida. Always on, you know, all their websites for the best beach. I don't know, it's always sunny in Clearwater. 
My name is Debbie Moneypenny, and I'm Billy Atterbury's mom. He's always been big. <laughs> He's always loved sports. He spent a lot of years playing baseball and football. He actually got to participate in the Dizzy Dean World Series that we went up to Georgia and they won that season. So that was the last season of his baseball, I think. At the age of 14, we were told that he had to make a choice. Growing up was, was pretty tough because I was always taller than everyone else. And I know, contrary to popular belief, I was actually pretty skinny growing up. But because I was so much taller than everyone, I always had to play a weight class like above. So I guess it was a good thing, bad thing. I never got to play with kids my own age, and that was weird. But at the same time, I, uh, I got the chance to play against a bunch of bigger and better kids. So I think it made, it pushed me to be, you know, better to be able to compete against them. I'm just gonna cover myself up. Oh wait, let me get, yeah, wait, I need to borrow that. I transferred after my sophomore year to Clearwater Central Catholic, the school we're going to now. And uh, the rest was history. And here we are, even says it, home of the Marauders. My sophomore year is when they got the turf. None of these stands were here. None of these football facilities were here. My years, that's where the home, home sideline was. The bleachers over here were smaller than that. And that's what we used to have. Yeah, beating a bunch of the guys that are on the team now here, you know, because a lot of them were younger than me or going to other schools. So like Jacob Mathis, when we played him at Berkeley Prep, I mean, we'd known each other and talked about it, but he ended up going to a different school. And then when he transferred in, it was like, I already know you, like I've played against you and dealt with you before. So that was cool. And then like Bentley Sanders, who was at Tampa Catholic, you know, another guy who was, he was in a younger class, so I didn't really know who he was, but it's, we'd played a bunch of games against each other in the uh, regular season and the playoffs. And uh, I have a winning record against Tampa Catholic in my years, and he has a winning record against my school in his years. So like my sophomore year before he was on varsity, we won, and then his senior year after I left, he won. So we both are two and one against each other, which is kind of funny, I don't know. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to be in a quick interview, just talk about your brother a little bit? Sure, why not? I talk about him enough already. Well, poor thing. Everybody asks for her. But... Yeah, I can't go anywhere in Pinellas County without being asked if I'm Billy's sister. <laughs> you roll on that? <laughs> <laughs> I, can say I can't go anywhere without people asking me about him. It's people that he hasn't seen since he played Little League Baseball or that they went to middle school with him and they're like, oh, how's your brother? Oh, how's Billy? I'm doing great too. Thanks for asking. Marcus stole my number. I want that on camera. That was my number. He and I took a lot of road trips. It was really great to have him at USF and to be close and we can go to all of his games and I wish more practices were open because I'd be at those as well. She's always one of those team mom types, always into it. She was always at the game. She's not one to hold back either, sitting in the uh, in the stands screaming for her son. That's that's always my mom. When they come to the games, they're always there at the tailgate, and they're there, and you know where their seats are, so you can see them during the game. It's nice knowing that they're able to come to every game and support you. Yeah, not a bad place. That's what I always tell people. You come to vacation, I just call it home. Not a bad place to grow up, huh?
Bull Strong. Inside USF Football is brought to you by Wendy's. Green and gold pride waved in the breeze and tantalizing aromas filled the early autumn air as did the usual toys of a tailgating nation. The South Florida Bulls were getting ready for their American Conference opener. Go Bulls! Blake Barnett from Corona, California, and I'm from Corona, California. I'm his great aunt. And she would see her great nephew play a great game. South Florida fans were more anxious than usual. Their Bulls hadn't played in two weeks and were coming off their strongest performance of the season, and they were 4-0 after a bye week under head coach Charlie Strong. The pregame had a family reunion feel in the friendly surroundings of Raymond James Stadium, where they had won 21 of their last 27. But this is about more than football. The USF program is dedicated to producing not only better athletes, but better people. The last Saturday in September, designated as set the expectation game. Hi, I'm Brenda Tracy. I am a rape survivor. I'm also the founder of the national campaign and nonprofit set the expectation. Set the expectation game is a game where we raise awareness on issues of sexual assault and domestic violence. And we also honor survivors of sexual assault and domestic violence. Set the expectation is a national movement. Purple is the color for domestic violence and relationship violence awareness. Teal is for sexual assault awareness, and so you'll see the team wearing Set the Expectation shirts, you'll see patches on the coaches. It's amazing to see teams really step up. Sometimes I go and I share my story and kind of a movement happens on a campus, and uh, USF is one of those schools, so really proud of the team. Very proud of Coach Charlie Strong. He is amazing. I wish that all coaches would follow his lead, so this is incredible for me to be here today. Coach Strong, he's big on the respect of women. It's important for our program and for players to know that they come here to USF that you're going to respect women. You're going to go to class. Our guest speakers that Coach Strong brings in to talk about etiquette dinner, you know, how to, how to handle yourself with uh, the police, how to make sure that you're, um, you know, handling yourself properly on social media, things like that that just develop not only for the student athlete right now, but will serve them well 5, 10, 50 years into the future. Because that's what's most important, and Coach Strong is all about that. The challenge of this afternoon came from unbeaten SMU in a nationally televised contest. The Bulls had won five of the six conference openers since joining the American. Coming off a 55-point performance in their previous win, they moved the ball some in the first half but never got in complete sync. The defense tried to keep them in it, a unit that started the weekend tied for the most takeaways in the country. And Michelle to throw. Long over the middle of the field into traffic, and it's picked off by the Bulls. At the 20-yard line, coming back the other way with a nice return. Looks like Devin Studd still got the pick. It's the second turnover of the day for the Bulls' defense. First one was negated on a change call. This one is going to stand up. Studd still, the first-year Bull, picks up the interception. They weren't happy about the way things went in the first half, but they weren't about to give in to it either. The Bulls continued to pound away on defense, and their next man up mentality was on full display when Blake Barnett relieved an injured Jordan McLeod at quarterback. It helps to have a target like senior tight end Mitchell Wilcox, who led USF with four grabs for 77 yards, as he helped spark three straight touchdown drives led by Barnett. Flared out to the right, caught. Johnny Ford now going to take it all the way around to the left. Barnett looking to try to throw a block for him, and Ford gets the sideline and gets a nice game out of it. Joiner on the left side, three wide receivers. Barnett to throw. Now rolling out to the right, getting chased. Got a man wide open. He finds him. It is caught. It's Jacob Mathis stretching for the end zone, and he got there. That's six for the Bulls. Jacob Mathis, a 24-yard touchdown reception. Barnett threw touchdown passes on three straight drives and used his legs to set up his arm. And while it's nice to have a senior like Wilcox to throw to, the future looks in good hands with a sophomore like Bryce Miller. He's got a man open. It's caught. It's Bryce Miller. Miller fights through a tackle. He's inside the 30 of SMU, and that's a first down for the Bulls. That's a 37-yard pickup. Miller finished with a career high in receiving yardage. Barnett throws wide open in the end zone. Caught touchdown USF. Bryce Miller. 
While it was too little too late for a win, it was not too late to complete a lesson in perseverance. There was no let up in these Bulls as they scored three touchdowns in a little over 12 minutes. In a relief roll, Barnett threw for over 200 yards for the 10th time in his career. Wilcox caught the final touchdown. There is comfort in competing to the end. There is torment in mistakes, especially penalties. Those are correctable. In the end, the day started the way it began, with the South Florida Bulls family together, looking to the future in all things. He has now set a USF single game rushing record. Touchdown, USF! Blake Barnett on a keeper. They will run on first down and splitting the seam and going all the way down the field for a huge game. Goes long, and this is picked off by Mike Hampton. Bulls defense digging in. A foot race to the end zone, and nobody is going to get him. Barnett fakes the handoff. He's got Mitchell Wilcox for a big play. Well, as an offensive coordinator, I think one of the best things that you can do is, is there's two things. I think first you have to be unpredictable and try to stay one step ahead of the defensive coordinator. Now rolling out to the right, got a man wide open. He finds him, stretching for the end zone, and he got there. And then I think the next thing is, is I tell everybody you got to scare the heck out of the defensive coordinator uh, on every snap. If we can do those two things, we'll be successful. So what we're trying to do is really just attack all, the, all parts of the field. Uh, we want to vertically stretch you uh, and make sure if you're not, not defending that part of the field, we're going to take some shots and we're going to create some explosive plays in the passing game. And with you did those explosive plays, you score a lot of points. When you got a coach that's right by your side, when you, he know you can do great and he's helping you try to be great, you ain't got nothing but to be great. Barnett throws wide open in the end zone. Caught touchdown, USF. Bryce Miller, first of his career. That's six for the Bulls. One of the big reasons why I, this was a great opportunity for me, I felt like, was um, you know the opportunity to coach for Coach Strong. We've known each other for over 30 years, and i am always known him as respect the heck out of him, not only as a coach, but also as a person. And um, when you go to work for people, you want to work for good people. And I knew that was the opportunity here with Coach Strong. Well, Kerwin and I go, uh, we go back a, a number of years. He has a system, a system that he truly believes in, and, but a system that he has built by the number of coaches that he worked for. This is more about building confidence. And so when you have a system and the players believe in it, and they trust you and your system, and they start believing in the system, then the system has a chance to be successful. Bull Strong. Inside USF Football is brought to you by USF Health. You know, it's, it's one of those games that I just told our players, we'll get it corrected because we're, we're better than that. We know this, that it, it can be fixed, and we just got to go to work. I told our coaches, you know, it, that's on us. The cloud to throw, airs it out. He's got Cron Cron makes the catch first down and much more. We knew that going into the game, we knew what type of quarterback it was. We knew it was going to be the long balls, and they came down with the balls. You know, we, was there, we had good coverage, but they were able to make the catch. I felt like our corners were in pretty good coverage, you know, just the call didn't go our way. And sometimes it's just how the, uh, the call goes. Shell so. to throw, long over the middle of the field into traffic, and it's picked off by the Bulls. At the 20 yard line, coming back the other way with a nice return. Jordan uh, springing his wrist, coming in with Blake, and he, be, he was able to engineer some good drives for us and, and move the ball down the field. Fakes the handoff, looking to throw, and he's got Mitchell Wilcox for a big play. So that's a 43 yard catch and run. Yeah, I think it was a good spark. Uh, I thought um, Blake came in and threw some great passes, um, and, and I think he's, he's getting his feet back. I think he played well. Now rolling out to the right on a man wide open. He finds it. It's Jacob Mathis. Yeah, we're really close on a lot of plays. Uh, I think game could have gone differently with a few plays. Uh, Throw just... over the middle. It is caught. Touchdown, USF. Mitchell Wilcox and Blake Barnett now has three touchdown passes in the second half. I mean, this is stinging. I mean, this is not the result we wanted. But uh, like I said, we have the guys in the locker room to, to 
to get this right. The thing we can't do, and I told them, you can't get the loser's limp. We can correct what is happening to us. You know, the penalties, we can correct the penalties. You can correct all the things that are happening to us. So there's no need in us getting down on ourselves or all of a sudden looking like, hey, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, you just got to go to work. And, and our, our players understand that. Our confidence is very high. Our guys believe in themselves, we believe in them. We know we're going to go out there and try our best every time. We're going to play our tails off. And we're going to go back to work Sunday even harder. Because we know we haven't reached our full potential yet, and we're trying our best to reach it. And when we do reach it, you know, everything is going to fall in place. Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by Wendy's. When the Bulls win, you win at Wendy's. And by Coca-Cola. Hooters. Tampa General Hospital. USF Health. Here we go. 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 